I've always wanted to make my own robot arm, a desktop sized one, something that might be able to carry out useful tasks. But the thought of designing something like that from scratch with no knowledge is kind of intimidating. So in this small series of videos, I'm going to be designing a miniature robot arm. When embarking on a project, I always find it's good to have a goal in mind. So for this project, I'm going to create a miniature robot arm, which can reset this marble run. Once the marble reaches the bottom, it can lift it up and put it back up to the top. For the first version of this robot arm, all the pivots are going to be just these plain M4 bolts. We'll come back in another version and replace them with bearings. The motion control will be via these little SG90 servos, which will be either directly coupled to the arms as in here, or controlling the arms via linkages. We've got a very simple gripper up the top here, again directly coupled to the servo, with a little cutout for the ball to slot into. The main arm is printed in two parts, mainly for ease of printing so we don't have to use support materials. The pivots for the main arm are these M4 by 16 screws. It's not the best idea having screws running straight onto plastic with no bearing surfaces, but for this quick prototype it seems to work just fine. and we'll add some washers for spacing. The servo horns are just attached with little M2 screws, which are really easy to drop. This double parallelogram linkage here means that no matter what the angle of this arm or this arm, the hand here always stays level. Now we move on to the base. Again, this is printed in two sections to save on supports. For now, the base will just pivot on another one of these M4 screws. Now there's just the hand left to do. And there we have it. The assembled arm. Now we've built our arm, we just need to connect it to the Arduino. All the servos here have their brown leads tied to ground and their red leads tied to plus 5 volts from an external power supply. We'll just tie the signal pins from each of the servos to a digital pin on the Arduino. We've got some buttons wired up and we'll just connect a rotary encoder as well. Right, on to the software to make this run. We've got the normal pin definitions here. We set up our servos here on those pins 
specifying the start and stop PWM timings. Then we set our button pins to be inputs. And in our main loop, we read the encoder position. And then if the encoder is moved and we've pressed one of the buttons, then we simply tell each servo to move to the position it is at the moment, plus the amount we've turned the encoder. We're also doing a little bit of writing out to the serial console so we can see what position we have the arm currently in. Now with everything hooked up we should be able to see if it works. Pressing a button and turning the knob should move each of the servos. We can finally try it on our little marble run. It works! As we move the arm we can see the position recorded in the serial console. We can now take these numbers and use it to automate the movement of the arm. After we've recorded all the positions we can then put them into a simple sketch. Here we're just doing the normal setup that we did last time and then for each position telling the arm to move to that position and then putting a little delay in afterwards. If we run it, we can see it does work, but the movement is very jerky as the robot arm just moves from one point straight to the next with nothing in between. What we need to do is interpolate the moves. Thankfully, the Arduino ramp library makes this really easy. We just need to declare a new ramp for each one of our servos. Then, instead of writing directly to our arms, we can set up a ramp for each of them, telling it where we want it to go, how long we want it to take, and then while the ramp's running, we just move to each step in between. The little arm is a lot smoother now. There's still a little bit of jerkiness, and I think this is down to the M4 screws we're using as pivots, but it's a really fun and addictive thing to play with. If you fancy building your own version of this, the CAD and code are linked in the description below. Please let me know in the comments if you do make this, or if there is anything you think I should change. Next time I'll be adding bearings and making it easier to automate with inverse kinematics, so please subscribe so you don't miss that.